Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another edition of the League One Lowdown where I speak to fans, podcasters and journalists of each League One club to get their thoughts for the coming season. Today I'm joined by Ash, Sheffield Wednesday fan and the man from the Wednesday Week podcast covering all things owls. Uh, Ash, a quick introduction to yourself and the podcast. It's been a crazy uh, few months of Sheffield Wednesday but uh, how did it all start for you? Oh yeah, um, th- thanks for inviting us on Ross, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. Um... Yeah, it all started uh, like a lot of supporters way back when, um, supporting as a, a child and everything. I've been our uh, podcast been running about 10 years now and I've been part of it for the last two. So really honoured to be asked on um, to give all thoughts of Sheffield Wednesday's, uh, I'd say ups and downs, but I think it's more downs at the minute than ups. Uh, but obviously in, in a few months, there'll, there'll be another up, hopefully. But yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're excited for a new uh, season in a, Different league, should we call it? A different league, I'm going to call it. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it was, it was it was crazy to seeing just you know from an outsider just watching Sheffield Wednesday and everything. I know it's been many downs and been a very up in the air of everything. Uh, Darren Moore, what a great manager you got there. Relegation to League One again. Um, let's quickly just mention that. What was that feeling like? You know, getting relegated again and just everything up in the air at the club. Uh, well, the, the the feelings obviously a bit upsetting, a bit angry, a, a mixture of feeling. I think towards the end with the points deduction and things, uh, there was an air of inevitability about it as well. And to, but I think the the thing on the last day of last day of the season, the last game against Derby, I think we we were safe for twenty seconds. I think or something daft like that. Because I mean. Uh, other games went our way, and then we gave away a silly penalty, um, which is which is heartbreaking, really. And, and I think uh, between fans and um, friends and all, all all the people you talk about Sheffield Wednesday, it, it was a a sad time, of course. And going down to League One, where we where you mentioned before, we've been the, before. Um, yeah, it's not good, but it, it's time to. To rebuild, and we'll, we'll get on we'll get on to other other bits and pieces. But it's time to rebuild Sheffield Wednesday. It's going to be a hard season. No season's easier, especially in a in a league where, if you look at the League One, it, if you take out 10, 11 of them teams, they could be Championship teams as well, and have been in the past. So it's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, really am. Really am. Definitely. We're, we're talking off air. League One is going to be so open and we'll get into that later. But let's talk about transfer business. Um, still very early days in the transfer window. Still got a month to go. So more signings can be made for any League One club. Um, before we get into the Sheffield Wednesday's business, because I want to quickly mention Matt Penny, uh, previously at Sheffield Wednesday. So a little insight from yourself. Um, signed on a free transfer to town. Um, I've had a spell in Germany, of course. But um, what's your insight on him? What sort of player was he like at Sheffield Wednesday? And do you think he'll be a good signing for town? Um, I think he will be a good signing. I don't think he really got the games and the, the chance that he deserved, to be honest. Uh, obviously, I watched him a few times. Nothing. It's one of those ways. Nothing spectacular. Left back predominantly. So he's not not one of those positions that are a fancy position. But he had a cra- he had a good chance in Germany, played really well all accounts uh, under a previous manager which we won't mention his name um, but then he did, he did come back to Sheffield Wednesday uh, and the first couple of uh, games that he started, he did look like the, the time in Germany did him well played really well and then he got he got dropped, he had a, he had a not an off, off, an off game but got dropped and never never had a look in after, uh, which, is, which is a shame because I'm sure that for, for for the right team, he will be a good player. He just, I just think that he didn't have enough of a run in the team. Um, to me, and he's still a young lad anyway, so he's he's got plenty of time. And picking him up on a free transfer, then yeah, uh, no brainer really for any team. So it'll be it'll be good to see him come back to Hillsborough. Definitely, and I'm sure he'll get a good reception. You know, fans back in stadiums. I'm sure Hillsborough will be rocking, and you know, all the grounds in the in the country will be rocking. I cannot wait for that. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Sheffield Wednesday transfer business. Um, like many clubs, a lot of players have left on free transfers, contracts being gone. Yeah, uh, of yeah. course, one of them is Matt Penny. Um, let's look at more of the, the signings that have come in. Um, which ones are the standout? I know the most recent one is Jack Hunt. Um, yeah. But 
is there any players that have left that you're disappointed that have gone on a free? You know, there's a few that actually probably said good riddance, you know, that maybe they weren't performing as they were. But quickly talk about the ins and then bring out the, the, the outs that you're maybe disappointed about. Yeah, well, uh, I'm going to... Two seconds, I'm going to talk about the ones that are still there. So I think the biggest bit of transfer for, for, for Wednesday will be keeping hold of Bannon and Windass. Um, people that have listened to our show know I'm not Bannon's biggest fan and I've, I've admitted this but I think as a player in the squad just being relegated captain to keep him there and obviously he's not a league one player it will be massive for Sheffield Wednesday it'd be really good to keep him uh, I know he's signed a new contract uh, but just to keep him tied down would be great and Windass he's just got injured in the last pre-season game hamstring so he's going to miss the start of the season which could be a blessing because obviously no one's going to sign a croc. So hopefully he's, he's done his, him, himself a favour and Sheffield Wednesday a favour. Um, but yeah, them two, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be great. And the, the centre-half I offer, I don't know if you've... Uh, he was injured most of last season anyway, and probably one of the biggest parts of us uh, getting relegated because he is an absolute monster. And if no one comes in for him, then especially championship team, there's something wrong. Because he's he's he is a player. He's he's got a lot. So hopefully we'll keep them three. Um, yeah, announced yesterday, Jack Hunt, uh, a returning player, um, signed free transfer. Sold him a couple of years ago to Bristol City for one point eight million, and we're going back on a free. Um, it's been on on social media, been took very well with the fans. Uh, myself personally, I think it's a good signing if we've got him a, a good wage. Now, this is uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Everyone knows we've got his issues off the pitch um, and signings have been limited to like freeze and loan players. So wages, we've, we've um, got rid of a, a few big earners. So if, we can, if we've got Hunt, a good reasonable wage, I believe it's one year with a one-year extension option, uh, 30 years old. So definitely a good signing. Um, I'm excited about... Oh, I'm I'm terrible at pronouncing. I apologise to the young lad. Oh, don't worry, mate. I'm bad as well. So <laughs> let's see how bad you are. <laughs> uh, Shadipo, Shadipo. Um, Good yeah, from from QPR on loan. Uh, it was at Oxford last season, and he's got can play on either wing, uh, uh, but uh, his left left winger predominantly. He's got what we've missed uh, for a few seasons: his pace. And I've seen. I'm not obviously we've not seen a great deal of him at the minute, but his highlight reel. Well, you can make a highlight reel look great, can't you? But what we what we've seen on socials is 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 handy with the ball, got pace, it can take players on, um, which excite it's exciting to to see a player like that come to Sheffield Wednesday, which we very rare we've had. So looking forward to to him and a, and a, and Jaden Brown from uh, Huddersfield, uh, left back, obviously um, Penny's left now, so we needed somebody as well. Um, I'm looking forward to him. He can play wing back as well. It all depends what Darren Moore wants to do, um, but it's good to have the options. So yeah, and looking looking forward to him. He's played a couple of times in pre season. Um, I think he is, and he, he looked all right. He looks good. Uh, and then that's it. Really, we've got uh, oh, another one. Dennis uh, Adinaran. I think is how you pronounce it. Is uh, from Everton. Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm useless now. Just uh, I'm rubbish. Um, so he's from Everton youth team. So they've heard good things about him as well. So hopefully there's going to be, we're desperate need for a new goalkeeper and we desperately need a number nine. Two positions that you can't get wrong, I think. Yeah. And we're, we've got a month, like you say, a month left and we're searching for, for both. Personally, I think. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be hard to get the players, especially number nine. I mean, to get any, any striker that's going to, 20 plus we need we, we need a 20 plus Callum Patterson don't I, I think he'll do a job I just don't think he's the 20 plus goal scorer that we really need and that's realistic we, we do need one um, yeah it's going to be good I think it's going to be good hopefully and, you, yeah hopefully uh, yeah, hopefully I think uh, hopefully Taron as well will be very ambitious we'll get into your thoughts on our transfer window you mentioned Dominic Iorfa of course he previously was on loan at town and uh, he was a very good player um, so I think he will do fantastic in League One 
Um, I'm looking through the Sheffield Wednesday side, and as you said, Barry Bannon, you know, Josh Windass, you know, a lot of these were links to big clubs. You know, Windass was at Rangers, and you know, yeah. it's gonna be so many different League One players. You just never thought they'd be playing in League One. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Um, it, it is gonna be. It is going to be a feast for the eyes. Not obviously, not just Sheffield Wednesday, but there are. If you look through League One, there are some players that you're thinking, why are they, why are they in League One? Do you, do you know what I mean? It's it's getting. We've always said that the Championship is 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 great for players, and you can't, don't expect them players. But if you look even further down now, obviously the third tier, there's there's players there. You're thinking now. So that's it. The next four weeks for for Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, outgoings as as well as incomings are, are going to be uh, pretty crucial, I think. Mm. I'd be very intrigued. And of course, this will probably go out when, you know, never know there could be other signings or people leaving, but what well, is what it is when we're recording this. Um, but let's talk <laughs> about Sheffield Wednesday season. Uh, League One is going to be very open, as I said. Um, anybody's going to be fighting for the promotion, the top six and winning the title. You know, you never know. There could be dark horses for a relegation. You never know. Someone could be out of nowhere could go, wow, they've been relegated. How do they get relegated? Yeah. But um, you watch your thought, gut instinct, right now the season starts. Um, what do you think of Sheffield Wednesday? Surely they've got to be up there. Yeah, I mean, it'd be... Um... <laughs> It'd be daft of me to say, obviously, we've, we've been relegated straight from the champion. We're going to go straight back up, top two, uh, top five. Uh, it, it, you, ca you, you, can't, you can't say that. Hopefully, obviously, hand on the heart, we're going to be playoffs um, minimum. Playoffs minimum for me. Um, you look at the team. But even saying that, we, we had a team last season that we, we thought we should have been mid-table championship. Obviously, points redu uh, deduction doesn't help. Um, and just some of the games we played where we were awful. Um, but yeah, League One, it's got to be a uh, minimum playoffs. Um, it's it's going to be how, I think for me, it's probably the same as every team. It's how we start. I think we've got a, we've got a, a tough first five games. So after, after that, it's, it's how we've adapted, how we've, because it's a different league. It's a different type of play. It's, we, we, we haven't played, these sorts of teams very often before, so it's it is going to be it's going to be how we start, how we adapt, how Darren Moore has us set up, and if he gets it right, um, yeah, looking forward to it. I think top six, um, and probably up there with Ipswich, Wickham, and Death Sit Rotherham. I think uh, I think the the three relegated teams, I think they've got enough, or they should have enough to show that they're can bounce straight back so it's it's well it, it's like if I knew I'd put money on it it's going to be one of those isn't it and and the predictors and the betters and all that it, there's going to be people way out on their uh, league predictions and things like that this season I think it's going to be uh, it's good I think it's good going to get to go to some different grounds like you say um, crowds back in certain extent I think fully capacity some places it all depends on the club i think they're what, what they're doing um and we've got a great following we've got a great away following it's really good when we're away so hopefully um the the guys from sheffield wednesday away they can uh, get some different grounds and uh, it's going to be a good season i think hopefully but it all depends don't it it's uh, if we knew it'd be great Definitely. And um, we'll finish off with uh, talking about your town and also, when, you know, Sheffield Wednesday and Chief Town play each other. You know, the teams you'll be playing this year, you know, Morecambe's, the Accretons, the Fleetwoods, you know, these sort of teams you never oh. think Sheffield Wednesday will be playing. Um, and no. they're going to these grounds as well. It's it's going to be great. No, you yeah. can't. No, I, I'm, I love it too. I'm, don't I'm, I love it too. I'm, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not, you know. I'm yeah. not one of them fans that think that we, we should be bigger, better than anyone else. I, it's football. Everyone who supports any team loves football, and that don't matter what where you go to. This this uh, same Ipswich this uh, preseason, they'll be playing teams that you think, oh bloody, what are you playing them for? Or uh, you get tickets. Or we played Alfreton last week, um, and took a great following there. And the, the the Sheffield Wednesday, like any other team, that they the the away following that people go to, they'll go anywhere to watch their team. And the, Plymouth away, Plymouth away. Now come on. Uh, that's going to be great, Plymouth. There's, um, like you said, Fleetwood. Uh, that's midweek away for us, which is it's it's not too bad. But it's bad for us. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, yeah. See, like 
Ips, Ipswich away for us midweek would be great, wouldn't it? I mean, it's uh, like four hours to get there and things like that on the train, and it's it's awful to get to. But but you do like we. I went away to Norwich um, two years ago uh, when uh, Forest Jerry's got a cracking goal. But um, but it's great to get to these grounds where places you don't get to before. Morecambe, like you say, it's it's going to be Shrewsbury is one I'm looking forward to. I think uh, yeah. so. It's going to be great. I, I, I am quite excited. And if anyone listens to the podcast, no, I am not the most exciting guy. I am Mr. Negative. So um, I am looking forward to it. So me and um, I take my lad. I've got a 13 year old boy. He comes with me. So we love going away games. And that's that's what he, he prefers away games to home games. And it's a bit sad saying that about Hillsborough. But yeah, he does. It's going to be good. Really excited. And um, we'll finish off then, as an outsider point of view, what's, what's your feelings on Ipswich Town? New owners, Ed Sheeran, sponsorship, uh, very ambitious. Uh, oh, what are you ch- talking about that? <laughs> oh, Ed Sheeran, eh? What, what, what don't the guy want to do, eh? Yeah. He's, uh, but, <laughs> all joking aside, I mean, as, lo- as long as you're not sponsored by betting companies and, and vape companies and stuff like that, you need to get your money in from where you can. And as a lifelong uh, uh, Ipswich Town supporter, uh, we've all seen the photo of him when he was a kid with a shirt and the glasses and the bright hair. I mean, fantastic for him and the club. It's got to be. It's got to. What's What's the thoughts? I'm sorry, I'm asking you questions now. What's the What's What's your thoughts on that having Ed Sheeran? Because from the outside, like you say, I, I don't think you you can't go wrong with that. Surely having a homegrown supporter sponsoring you. I, I, I yeah, think I think, it, I right. think it's yeah, I think it's fantastic. I know people have laughed about it. I'm not the biggest Ed Sheeran fan as he, with his music, but you know, I, I love yeah. you know local stuff. You got you got to do that definitely in Suffolk. You know, we love our local stuff. We always support the local stuff. So for him to come in saying, you know, have you got a sponsor? That's what he rang up and said, have you got a sponsor? And we went no, <laughs> and he went, oh, I'll, I'll sponsor you. So there we go, and that's just a massive thing. And it's global as well. Ed Sheeran is bloody massive. Mm. You know, he's got millions and millions of fans so that's just there's gonna be random Ipswich Town shirts all around the country in in, in the world like there'll be yeah. some in Japan or something it's like they don't even know what Ipswich Town is but they're just wearing it because it's got their Sheeran tour logo but yeah it's, that, it's gonna be interesting yeah it's got it's got to be it's got to be good for the club and obviously like you said the wider getting the name of Ipswich Town out there like it'd be it'd be great what you could do you could do something like a, a random competition or something say right tweet me or or send me a picture from anywhere in the world when you see an, an Ipswich shirt you could get yeah. some like the back streets of I don't know some African country and there's a, a, a yeah. lad with Ed Sheeran sponsor what that would be you don't know do you? it's it's, mm-hmm. it's going to be it'll be good it'll be good for him uh, I mean I wish we've got money issues and we have for a, for a while now and if we could get someone like just as I know uh, Ch- uh, Mr Chancery has has got his name plastered all over the club on the seats on the shirt but. <laughs> But we've just released the uh, the new kit this morning, the uh, kit announcement, and uh, and it's his his uh, name is not on the front, and I think you can buy that without the sponsor on the front now. So hopefully that that means he's he's moved over and he's going to get outside investment to to gain. So you don't know we could get I don't know uh, pulp, Arctic monkeys would be good, but I know a couple yeah. of them are Sheffield United supporters, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, great. I, I mean, it's. it's <laughs> Good for the club, isn't it? I mean, money in for you, money in for you, yes. which we desperately need. Yeah. And um, we'll wrap up um, talking about when we play each other. I think it's not until I think, let me get the fixture up quickly. Um, so, September 25th of September, when Sheffield Wednesday travel down to Portman Road. Um, once again, it's hard to predict because games haven't been played yet. But um, do you think it will be, a, it'll be a big talking point in that game in terms of two big sides facing each other? Like they may put it on TV, but what do you expect yeah. from that? Darren Moore, Paul Cook in the dugout. It'll be a very tight game, maybe. It, it will. It'll be an interesting one to watch, very much so, because uh, when we uh, dispensed of our previous manager, who, who was uh, rubbish, shall we say? <laughs> The Paul Cook, Paul Cook name has been mentioned at around Hillsborough for the last couple of seasons when we've gone through managers like nothing, and there's a lot of fan base that really called for him to be um, to be on. One of the guys off the podcast, Ben, he he was a, a real like up for Paul Cook coming. Um, he really wanted, um, so it'll be good to see that. Um, it's going to be, I think, it's going to be one of those 
I th I'm glad that we're playing earlier on each other. Like you said, because once a team gets into a groove, whichever team it is, it doesn't matter, uh, and they get a few wins behind them, it's going to be hard to bet, especially if there's, they're going to be the so-called top four favourites of, of the league as well. So I think it'll be um, it'll be a good test for both teams. Uh, I think, obviously, we're going to win, of course. <laughs> I, I can't say otherwise, but but it, it, it'll be good. Um, I think, yeah... I, it all depends on the start. Like I say, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm more one for believing about starting off well, uh, get a, a couple of games, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a it's just a long trip back with no points, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and and well, we all, we, I don't know about is it being announced about away ticket fans yet? I know, mm. so I know September is a long way away, but I'm I'm just thinking you don't know, do you? Anything could happen as well. Be a shame not to get to as many away games for every, all teams, not just Sheffield Wednesday. That's obviously, that you all want to come to Hillsborough, don't you? It's a marvellous old lady falling down. You've got all sorts of things. Money needs spending on it like nothing, but it's our home, isn't it? And it's better than some of these uh, multi use big stadiums like that you get, don't you? So I, I love it, and I know, I know a lot of people don't, but there you are. It's home. I've missed it. To be fair, Hillsborough used to always be the away day. Not because you're on, you're on here. I'm not being biased for you, but I do like Hillsborough. I've always had some great moments at Hillsborough. The, the late winners, Andre Dezel <laughs> coming on and making his debut. So they've always yeah. been good days. Although there's been some bad days as well. But I'm looking forward to Hillsborough. But anything else I'd add, Ash, before we wrap up? No, no. Just well, I want to wish everyone a, a safe, safe trip, trip or safe trip back to the grounds and everything, everything that's happened. Uh, we all need it. I think. For, for every football fan we've got to get out there back out there and watch our beloved teams don't we so Definitely. yeah looking forward to it thank you very much pleasure top man well um, hopefully everybody's enjoyed Sheffield Wednesday fans town fans let us know in the comments down below what you think of both sides um, that has been another League One lowdown I'll be back with another fan journalist or podcaster to talk about their club for the League One lowdown I've been Ross and I'll catch you next time bye bye for now <laughs>